Hey guys, and welcome back to another Lost Bits video right here on Tetra Bay Gaming, the series where we take a look at the unused, scrapped, and unseen content in gaming. In addition to a bunch of stuff this year, like shoes that sold out in an hour, pins that sold out in less, Lego sets that, well, you get the idea. We also got a Switch collection containing three, not four, but three of Mario's main series 3D platformers. And unfortunately, for whatever reason, this game is going to become a lost bit itself come March 31st, 2021, when it no longer is going to be up for sale. Now while this quick video won't be covering the cut content of the original releases, don't worry, 64 and Galaxy videos will happen eventually, here we'll be more so focusing on some hidden things in the games as they're presented in this collection. And really quick, if you're enjoying these videos, remember to subscribe. Only about 30% of the people that watch my videos are subbed, and new subscribers help the channel grow every day, and I really appreciate it. And with all of that said, let's -a go and find some lost bits. Alright, so first, before we have a look at any of the games in particular, there are a few interesting text strings found left over in the collection. The first of these is a set of text strings referencing several other Nintendo 64 games found in the content archive for Super Mario 64. These games include Kirby 64, The Crystal Shards, Mario Golf, Mario Story, what Paper Mario is known as in Japan, Mario Tennis, Perfect Dark, as well as Pokemon Snap. And some fans are already speculating that these could be strings that were meant to be deleted and that they could hint at potential future Nintendo 64 ports for the Switch, maybe even in a form like we have with the NES and Super Nintendo libraries. But on the other hand, it's also likely that since these are all games that were supported on the Wii U Virtual Console, these strings might just be leftovers from the developers testing Nintendo 64 emulation, as similar configuration to the Wii U and 64 emulator is used here with Super Mario 64. Either way, I'm definitely still holding out hope and crossing my fingers for an N64 library on the Switch, though. Next, the game's code also makes references to some VR Pikmin stages. Now, personally, I'm not exactly sure what these could be for, but as I'm making this video, Pikmin 3 Deluxe is just on the horizon, so maybe there's going to be some VR mode attached to it, like we saw with Mario Odyssey or Breath of the Wild. Or if you really like getting your hopes up, this could also be hinting at the next true installment in the Pikmin series, who knows. Next up, some timestamps have also been found, indicating the earliest known time development on this collection had started. Ecumber here found that a save file for Super Mario Sunshine in this collection is dated to February 19th, 2020, or about 7 months before release. Also apparently metadata for some cutscenes in the game dates as far back as December of 2019, so currently as we know it, development time for this collection was roughly 7 to 8 months, which is kinda interesting considering Wind Waker HD's much more impressive overhaul only took about 6. Of course, that was without a global pandemic. Anyways, we're moving on. Now let's get to the games. First, since it has the least to talk about, let's start with Super Mario Galaxy. So unlike the other games in this collection, Galaxy is the only one to not be completely emulated. Although the graphics and audio are emulated, the game code itself runs natively on the Switch's hardware, which I thought was pretty interesting. Alright, and now winding the clock back to Super Mario 64, this is where things get a bit more spicy. So first off, the file for Super Mario 64 is straight up just a regular ROM, just like any of the other ones you can totally legally play on a PC emulator. But there are changes in the game! I can already hear you typing. But I say nay! All the new changes to Super Mario 64 in this collection are actually done on the fly when running the game using certain scripts. So changes such as the updated textures, the press plus instead of the press start text on the intro, are all done on the fly. This is confirmed as if you extract the ROM from the game and run it in any old emulator without the scripts running, like I said, it's just a regular old ROM of the Shindo version of Super Mario 64. Furthermore, all the upgraded textures that are swapped in on the fly are found in this texture pack archive and can be also easily converted to PNG files. So if you wanted to, I don't know, stare at Peach's HD eyeball, you could do so to your heart's content. Then another thing that many people, myself included, weren't super happy with was the decision to invert the way the camera normally controls in Super Mario 64 and Sunshine. I let Melon Speedruns, who actually brought a lot of this video's information to my attention, explain how this change was made. Hey guys, Melon here. Now, many people believe this change was made natively in each game, though the truth is, this is just a product of how the games were being emulated. 
Basically, the controls were configured in this inverted way in both the Nintendo 64 and GameCube emulator that the collection uses. So let's say you were to extract the Mario Sunshine or the Mario 64 ROMs from the collection. Each one would play exactly the same way they used to. And Sunshine even has the analog controls that were removed from the collection. Now, I don't know if this inversion was intentional or not, but in any case, I think it would be nice if they gave the players an option to switch it back. Alright, back to you Mr. Lost Bits. Now moving on to Super Mario Sunshine. Interestingly, if you extract the game file from the collection and run it in any old emulator, the game works perfectly fine, but you'd be quick to notice that in place of all the game's cutscenes is just a black screen. The reason for this is, just like the textures in Super Mario 64, the new graphically updated cutscenes are too loaded in at runtime separately. So basically, the regular cutscenes in the game were removed in order to save on space, so they wouldn't be there twice in the game's files. Sunshine also swaps in a few updated textures, just like Super Mario 64, and here they use a folder literally titled, I kid you not, Lazy Texture Replace to do so. Say what you will about this collection, but if the developers are calling their own methods of updating a game lazy, then I don't know, just seeing the missed potential of a Wind Waker HD treatment stings that much more for me. Anyways, next a bit more info about the Sunshine game file that this collection uses. So first, for every regional release of this collection, Nintendo decided to go with the PAL regional version of the game, likely since it already had support for several languages. And then, another pretty interesting bit is that by default, if the ISO of the game is run in any old emulator, some of the button textures are actually shown as keyboard keys. A prime example of this is the ZR button is mapped to this key. Pretty weird. Lastly, although the game was upgraded to run at 30 frames per second from the normal PAL version's 25, it's still pretty strange why the developers didn't unlock it to run at a solid 60 frames. Now I'm no game dev, but apparently this is a pretty easy change to make. Changing only a few lines of code can apparently disable the game's 30fps lock, which can result in a smooth 60fps experience. I don't know, they just went through all this trouble of working on modding the game to run in widescreen, so I'm just surprised they didn't make this change that the emulation community has known about for years now. At first I thought maybe the reason for this was that the developers weren't confident if the Switch's hardware could handle it, but Galaxy runs pretty steadily at 60 frames per second, and that game is much more resource intensive than Sunshine, so I doubt that's the reason. Could be laziness, could be ignorance, but I'll leave you to be the judge on that one. I know I've probably seemed really critical about this collection in this video, and although admittedly I do wish it got a little more love from Nintendo, I do think it's really nice to have all three games available on the Switch now. Either way, I hope you guys enjoyed this Lost Bits video. If you did, check out some of the other ones I've made. And as always, thank you all so much for watching today, and I will see you in a bit.